In a way of kicking off for Black History Month, I'd like to talk about S.B. Fuller, a great businessman. He preached economic dependence and he lived it. He became a leader in the sales of cosmetics, starting his first cosmetics firm, the Fuller Products Company, in 1935 with $25. He ultimately owned or controlled eight other corporations, which included the Courier newspaper chain, with papers in Pittsburgh, Chicago, New York, and Detroit, a Chicago department store, and a New York real estate trust. Prominent blacks were to publicly condemn and shun him and urge others to do the same. Branded in the 1960s as an Uncle Tom, and sometimes even worse, by the leading luminaries of the civil rights establishment, Fuller's companies were boycotted by the black masses. His sin? He had refused to follow the civil rights party line as dictated by the reigning black and white notables of the day. In 1963, a speech he delivered to the National Association of Massachusetts, he stated that blacks would achieve success and prosperity if they worked harder and attained good educations and showed more initiative and business enterprise. Fuller claimed that, even more than racial barriers, it was a lack of understanding of the capitalist system that kept blacks from making economic progress. Fuller also claimed that when blacks finally concentrate on developing themselves so that they would that they would excel in what they do, they would then find that they have no real problems. He claimed that blacks were left behind economically because they have nothing to sell. These remarks were to earn him the enmity of a leadership intent on emphasizing the futility of black effort in an oppressive racist society. This super successful businessman, speaking as forcefully and eloquently as he did, was a bit appeal to these advocates of government custodianships and a threat to their philosophy of black helplessness. S.B. Fuller was well known for his assistance to other blacks. He opened the doors for many budding entrepreneurs, assisting them in finding capital and giving them invaluable advice and counseling. Vincent Baker reflects, there are a number of people in leadership positions who fear the coming of the truth because the truth might make black people free, free of the necessity of following a false leadership. S.B. Fuller had a sharp understanding of this. Mr. Fuller also often made the point that we blacks elevate people to leadership on the basis of the struggle for racial equality, whereas leadership in other communities rests with the business people, those who productively contribute to the prosperity of the group. The outrage against Fuller's words that blacks should exert their efforts to become economically independent is evidence of the weight of this dependency concept with the civil rights concept. We tend to confuse dependency with civil rights. Fuller used to talk about blacks standing before the white man with a handful of gimmies and a mouthful of much obliged. He wanted to see blacks free themselves from this endless begging. <laughs>